Are you wondering if the Mictiver 10.1 inch monitor I shared in my previous video would be a good addition to your Mega 65? Well, you have come to the right video because that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, Rachel Combs here. In my last video, I took a look at this monitor right here, the Mictiver 10.1 inch HDMI monitor. And it raised some questions from some of the viewers that we're going to take care of here. Primarily, I had several folks because they're from the Mega 65 community and they'd like to watch things on my channel. They wanted to know, hey, would this monitor be a good fit for the Mega 65? Well, let's just start with one thing that's readily apparent. This is kind of a small monitor if you put the two next to them. But if you're looking for kind of a, a small little monitor that sits nicely, maybe right there, with a few adjustments, you can kind of get it where you want. It's actually not bad. If your eyes are here and you're looking at your keyboard, you're not having to do this. So ergonomically, it's not bad. So that's one consideration, just the ergonomics, the size. You might want something a little larger, but still 10.1 inches isn't bad for this device and pairing these two together. So the other thing is, does it even work? And we'll need to find out, does it work in both NTSC and PAL? That was one of the questions asked. And then un kind of unrelated, but I thought I'd go ahead and cover it here is, there were some questions about, can you use that uh, horizontal and vertical shifting on an HDMI signal? So we'll do that here as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this monitor connected to the Mega 65. Now I've already plugged in the power. I need to plug in the power to my monitor, but we'll do that after I get an HDMI cable connected. So let me go ahead and get that done. Now you may remember if you've seen the video, there's a 90 degree bracket right here so that you don't have to have a cable coming in here and it gets awkward. So I place that in there and then we're just gonna use this really thin cable. I like this cable, it bends easily. You don't have to worry about it. We're gonna plug that in. So that gives us pretty clean installation right there. I like that. Now remember this does have speakers, so we should be able to pull the sound out of the Mega 65 with the HDMI out. And that is set by default because that's usually what I have with my capture device. So let me go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna to need to plug this into the Mega 65. Now, let me see if I can hide these wires a little bit. There we go, that's not bad. And the, uh, the actually the cable placement isn't bad either. It's not one of those awkward situations, you know, where the cable won't sit because the, the, uh, the plug to the cable sticking out and all that. So, so far, so good. Let me roll those sleeves up. Let's, let's get the rest of it done. All right, let's go ahead and plug in the power. All right, so now you can see we have HDMI pops up there. Uh, let me go ahead and move this so that you can see this again. I want you have kind of a straight on view. Now this is obviously not the way you would use this, but this will help you have a really good view out of this camera right here. So let's turn on the Mega 65 and see what we get. Oh, there we go. So it pops right up. Now it is stretching that out and I don't know that I have any way to fix that, uh, but let's see what we have selected here. So I'm gonna pull up the freezer menu. So there's our freezer menu. And you can see right now we are in NTSC. I'm gonna change that. And you can see now we're in PAL. One of the questions from the community was, is what does that look like and can this monitor actually handle that output? And it can, but again, we're getting a, a stretched look here. There's no way to, to give this a four by three because that, if you remember from my video or if you've not seen my video, be sure and check that out. And that'll be down in the video description below so that you can go back and check out my full review of this monitor. But if we go in here, there's no controls for setting four by three or changing that resolution. Now let's go ahead and cover the other question was, somebody wanted to know, can you adjust the vertical and horizontal positioning of an HDMI signal on this monitor? So let me go ahead and check that out here. Let's go down here to, you can see our horizontal position and vertical position. So if I go ahead and select, and let's see if we can change it. And actually look at that, the horizontal and vertical position, and I didn't check this out, didn't look at this, but that's only for the on-screen display. So all you're doing is changing the positioning of the on-screen display. We are not changing the position of the signal itself. So the answer to that question is no, the horizontal and vertical position shifting only changes the on-screen display. That's pretty odd. I was not expecting that. I guess it makes sense because it does say on-screen display here and that's what we're changing. And those are the things that adjust the on-screen display. There's a setting here that looks like it's an option to shift. Maybe that's for VGA. I guess what I could do is I could plug in a VGA from this to this and check that out. You know what? I think I want to do that. Well, let's do this first. Let's check the sound. Let's make sure we have sound. Let's go ahead and change that back to NTSC. It did, it actually is back to that now. Let's go back to resume and let's go to one. 
And we should get some sound. And there we go, we have sound coming through. So we know that that's working. All right, very good. I am going to let that run for a little bit and I'm gonna grab a VGA cable. I'll be right back. All right, we're back to basic here and I have a VGA cable. Let's go ahead and unplug the HDMI, plug in the VGA cable. Uh, we'll have to change a few things and see what we get here. Now this is really tight in here. Check this, I'm very, I have very little room in here to get this VGA cable in here. I do not miss these days where we had to screw these VGA cables into the backs of our old computers. Plug power back in to the monitor and hope we can bend everything back so that it will just stay. There we go. Well, that's not that's not horrible, is it? Let's go ahead and change our uh, signal to VGA. All right, and now we're in VGA mode. Looks like that's working fine in VGA mode as well. Looks pretty good actually. Um, one thing, and I'm going to check. Let's let's. Uh, now we're not going to get sound because I'm not. Of course, you can't run sound through VGA and I don't have a set of external speakers right now, but we heard all the sound. But let's try something here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good signal out for VGA as well. Let me get out of here. That's good. Now let's check our menus. And here's that adjustment again. Let's see if that's available for VGA. It is. So in VGA mode, we can change our horizontal positioning, our vertical positioning, our phase, and our clock. So with VGA, you're going to have many more options to configure that output the way you want it. So let's, let's see if we can just change the horizontal adjust. There you go. And you can see we are adjusting it. Check that out. So again, with VGA, you do get more control of your video. That's pretty good. And it tells us that we're exporting video at 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. Not bad. Let's try and see if it can handle PAL resolution. And you can see it's auto configuring that for PAL on VGA. A little bit, there it goes. Finally got situated. Let's go ahead and resume. And there you go. Now, again, we don't have that four by three, unfortunately, but that's not bad. And so coming out of VGA looks pretty good. Let's, let's check something here. So I'm looking at phase. Phase doesn't appear to really do much here. And let's check our clock. And you see clock is shifting it a little bit. So those are your options for adjusting VGA. Oh, interesting. At 50 hertz, we're exporting at 800 by 600. I'm going to put this back on NTSC. And there you go. Now it does look like it shifted to the right, so I can fix that a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Before I do that, let me do something here. Now we have a black background. We can see how to adjust that. So let's go in here and readjust. It looks like it just needs to be on 50. There we go. That looks really good. And we're ready to use our Mega 65. All right, so there you go. What do you think? Do you think this would be a nice monitor, a little inexpensive, less than $50 monitor to have with your Mega 65? Make sure you let me know down in the comments below. Let me know if I missed anything, something else you'd like to see. I'm happy to put that online or probably reply to a comment since I've already done two videos about this monitor, but for a little sum of money, and I will put the link down in the video description below for everything you've seen here today that could be helpful, including the little 90 degree bracket and some cables and that monitor, uh, it might not be a bad solution for my Mega 65 friends out there. If you're interested in what else you can use this monitor for, again, check out that first video where I review this Mictiver 10.1 inch monitor again down in the video description below, and it's showing up here. And hey, if you're interested in getting started with your Mega 65, Check out my Mega 65 user's guide. That's it for me. Retro Combs out. See you soon.